G'day humans, Chris Stead here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk you through Sonos Sound Motion, which is the new technology that's just been announced and is driving the Sonos Ultra Sound Bar coming out on October 29, 2024, potentially by the time you've actually hear, listened to this. But what is Sound Motion? Now, I've just got off a phone call that I've had with the Vice President of Audio at Sonos, Chris Davies, where he took me through well, a lot of the, all the products that are coming out as part of this new sound home theater range. So not only the Arc Ultra, but also the Sub 4, and also the way it connects with the Sonos Ace. But anyway, the sound motion stuff is particularly interesting, and I'm not sure how many people are really understanding what it is doing, uh, and, and why it's not only particularly interesting just in general for the future of audio technology, especially the audio technology coming out of Sonos, um, Sonos. Uh, but also why it makes the Arc Ultra a very, very interesting release indeed. So let's dive into that. And Sound Motion actually probably finds its origins in Might. So that's M A Y H T. Might was a company. It was purchased by Sonos back in 2022 for around US $100 million. So quite a purchase. Now at the time, Sonos CEO Patrick Spence said, Might's breakthrough in transducer technology will enable Sonos to take another leap forward in our product portfolio. Now, a couple of years later, we know that that breakthrough was sound motion. So the conventional drivers, the conventional transducers that we've seen in most audio products are based on a patent that's over 100 years old. So sound motion is kind of a big shift on the established system, or at least that's what Sonos is painting the picture for what sound motion is. And it's really interesting to think about what it could mean for Sonos' future as well as what it means right now for the Sonos Arc Ultra. So basically what sound motion is, is a, is a new type of architecture which effectively creates the same amount of sound from about a third the amount of space of a conventional driver. And the way that it does this is really, really intriguing. So the concept basically takes two diaphragms or, or cones and places them parallel to each other. They are joined at the four corners by magnetic motors, which in themselves are connected via layered aluminium ribs to provide structural rigidity and suspended with high performance injection molded polymers for a very linear low distortion sound. Now, as one side of that dual diaphragm setup moves in, the other side moves out. And this allows the force to basically be canceled, preventing vibrations, as well as moving more air for added base, as you've got twice as much radiating surface area that is moving. Now that space is further improved by the movement of those four magnetic motors to the corners. So this allows for bigger sound from a much smaller piece of tech. In fact, it's three times the base. Like I said, it's three times the base as you'd get from a similarly sized traditional, sorry, tra similarly sized traditional transducer. And the Arc Ultra itself compared to the original Arc has double the base. So six decibels more space in that 50 to 60 Hertz range. So uh, like a substantial improvement but something that's a third smaller uh, than what you would need for a traditional transducer. Now, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what sound motion is. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because whereas the original Arc had eight woofers in it and three tweeters, the Arc Ultra only has the one woofer, which is the sound motion. And then it has six mid ranges and seven tweeters on top of that, uh, creating a, you know, a 14 speaker system basically, but a, a 9.1.4 uh, Dolby Atmos uh, rendering. Now I'm going to do a bunch of other videos because this chat that I had with Chris Davies went for 35 minutes and we spoke a lot about a lot of different things to do with the Ultra but also the issues between Android versus iOS and a lot of other bits and pieces that if you're a Sonos fan you, you, I'm sure you'll find them interesting but I just want to break them up a little bit so that they were more focused and just a dumping of all the things that I learned. But one of the questions, so I, as well as him presenting the products, I also interviewed Chris Davies. And one of the questions I asked him basically was whether now that they've kind of got this sound motion out in the world, this is going to become the go-to tech for Sonos products moving forward. And I'm going, to, I'm going to read basically his quote back to you right now. So what he said to me as an answer to that question was, 
This is our first product that we're using this technology in, but we're absolutely looking at ways that we can use it and reimagining what we can get in terms of the performance of product in really compact packages. We're looking at all the different places we can use sound, sound motion. Every product we design, we're looking at the fit of the product and its acoustic needs, and sound motion gives us another tool in our toolbox to really extend further. So with sound bars, where we're looking at a low profile forms, sound motion is a really good technology that fits with that. With other products that have different shapes and sizes, they may be more complementary traditional transducer technology, but some will be complementary to sound motion. So we're always looking at what is the right technology and what are the right fit options. But sound motion lets us think about all of our products a little bit differently. We certainly think about how sound motion could affect all of our portfolio over time. So I think that's pretty interesting. So uh, basically, it doesn't sound like sound motion is going to become the go-to. Obviously, we just had the Rome 2 just came out. That's using traditional transducer technology. Um, but uh, it's definitely suggesting that sound motion is going to play a pretty pivotal role in a lot of the products that are coming and potentially different products that we've ever seen before out of Sonos. So quite interesting, I believe. Now you may be wondering right now, obviously you can, you can still get that sound out of a traditional transducer setup. However, you just need you know three times more space to provide it. So the actual Ultra, the Arc Ultra is thinner, like it's not as, um, it's got a lower profile, but it's actually longer than the original Arc. So it's not like that size, that having a sm small, smaller setup with the sound emotion has meant for a smaller product. What's actually done is opened up the amount of space within the product to do more with other speakers and to basically change the array and to change the, you know, to customize the waves that are coming out of this uh, setup to create a more, I guess, overwhelming orbital of sound around you. Uh, a more effective rendering of surround sound from a singular sound bar. And he, you know, during our chat, Chris Davies spoke a bit about how they can now get like, you know, with the center speakers, they can get a tweeter right in between two mid ranges and that allows them to do a lot more with enhancing dialogue from that center channel, uh, as an example. And they've got, been able to like, you know, separate the upward firing speakers so that there's two for rear upwards and two for front upwards. So they can send them up at slightly different speeds so they bounce down to the user at certain angles and, and basically create a sense of the sound bin both in front of you and behind you from an upwards direction. So you can get that sound basically going from the TV to your back wall through you. So really interesting, I think, how they've done the architecture with this particular device. And like I said, keep you on the channel because I'm gonna break down the rest of this conversation and try and get some more videos up to explain more about what they've done and how this differs from the original arc and also what the future looks like it's going to hold in relation to Android uh, and it's coming into the picture and what you're going to miss out with if you've only got an Android device. All right, anyway, that's Sound Emotion. Now you know all about it. Pretty exciting, right? Let me know in the comments what you think and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can catch those other Sonos videos as soon as they go live. All right, I'm Chris Dead. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, I'll check you later. You.